you're simply the best. <laughs> Classic Tina Turner. But um, Celine Dion has also done a cover of the song. But we won't be talking about Celine today, but selenium, because a new study has come out that I think you'll find interesting. So selenium then, the chemical element that is essential for our bodies. This is because selenium is used in selenium-containing proteins, of which we have 25 genes for in humans. These genes are important for development and also include proteins involved in redox homeostasis, so controlling oxidation and reduction reactions. So how can a protein contain selenium? Well, they contain at least one amino acid, the building blocks of protein, known as selenocysteine. Cysteine is one of the 20 different amino acids used by our cell, but instead of having the sulfur residue as found in cysteine, selenocysteine instead has selenium. So I guess technically there are more than 20 different amino acids. But selenocysteine is pretty rare in relative terms compared to the other amino acids. But that doesn't mean it's not important. So where does selenium come from? Well, we can get selenium from our diet. Selenium is found in foods like oysters, Brazil nuts, eggs, tuna, sunflower seeds, and mushrooms. The current recommended dietary allowance for humans is 55 micrograms, which might sound a bit low, but selenium toxicity can occur at levels above 400 micrograms. It has been previously shown in mice that dietary selenium levels regulate the expression of selenoproteins, which sort of makes sense as you can't make these selenoproteins if you're deficient in selenium. But they also saw in a study that altering the intake of selenium didn't impact mouse lifespan. But the story doesn't end here. And that's because I like Brazil nuts and tuna, and when I'm not recovering from a bike injury, I also like to go running. And well, exercise in general has been known to have neurogenesis enhancing effects. But how exactly? Well, it's commonly known that exercise results in the systemic release of many factors into the blood, which can be sensed by neural stem cells in the brain. The question is, determining which of these factors are important and relevant to the event. So, in this recent publication, they did proteomics of mouse blood plasma from either mice that were kept in a cage, compared to mice that had access to a running wheel for four days. And out of 68 proteins that changed significantly in the mice with the running wheel, selenoprotein P was the most significantly upregulated. So as hinted at by the name, selenoprotein P is indeed a selenoprotein. The unique feature about this selenoprotein though is that it actually contains 10 selenocysteine residues, whilst the others appear to just carry one. So could this be the cause for increased neurogenesis? Well, to know this for sure, you have to uncover the molecular mechanism, so that's what they did. And so firstly, they questioned whether selenium alone could cause neurogenesis. They infused sodium selenide, a water-soluble salt of selenium, into the hippocampus of the mice for seven days, and then looked to see if there were signs of cell replication. In the dentate gyrus, a region adjacent to the hippocampus and known to contain neural precursor cells, they saw a threefold increase in the number of proliferating cells following this increase in selenium. This region of the brain is also involved in episodic memory and exploration of novel environments, so it was therefore validating to see that old mice, here 16 months old, that were given 50 nanomolar selenium in drinking water for eight weeks, performed better in different spatial learning tasks, such as the Barnes maze, where mice have to use visual clues to locate the escape chamber. So let's come back to selenoprotein P. How would that work? Well, there are receptors on brain capillary endothelial cells called LRP8, which recognize selenoprotein P and aid selenium transport across the blood brain barrier. Though exactly how this is done seems a little bit unclear to me. But anyway, in line with this idea, mice with LRP8 Mice without LRP8 showed a significant reduction in neurogenesis following exercise compared to the controls. So to summarise all of these findings so far, the authors have generated this figure. Selenium, or running, mediates an increase in neurogenesis in adult mice. The former mechanism involves both selenoprotein P and LRP8, and this increased neurogenesis is correlated with improvements in spatial memory. 
There are clearly some questions that remain to be addressed. Where is the selenium protein P coming from, for example? It's thought that this protein is mainly expressed in the liver, but it could in theory come from other cell types too. Selenium protein P is also just one out of many factors that are upregulated during exercise, and others include cathepsin B, BDNF and FEGF. So do these factors synergize together to promote neurogenesis? So what are my thoughts? Well, I'm a runner and I like exercise, and I think that it comes with many benefits probably beyond an increase in selenoprotein P alone. However, what the study demonstrates is that we can use selenium to tease apart the molecular mechanism linking exercise to neurogenesis. However, it is worth mentioning that I think there appears to be a Goldilocks effect with selenium. Like how too much or too little exercise could be bad, so can too much or too little selenium. As deficiency or excess selenium levels have been linked to a variety of chronic health issues, including type 2 diabetes, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and depression. So what can you take from this study? Well, to quote from this article, We could start thinking about selenium as a strategy to treat or prevent cognitive decline in those who cannot exercise or are more vulnerable to selenium deficiency, such as older adults and stroke and Alzheimer's disease patients. And added support for this comes from the fact that selenium is a cheap, readily available dietary supplement and is found in many commonly eaten foods so could easily be implemented into a diet. And so one thing that I think would also be interesting to test is if you can remember back to the start of the video where I showed that selenium supplementation didn't increase my lifespan, would be to test whether a higher selenium diet increases the lifespan of Alzheimer's disease mouse models. As potentially, and I am being quite hypothetical here, one of the reasons why normal mice didn't seem to have an increased lifespan with selenium could be due to the fact that mice have never been a pretty good model for neurodegeneration, and so maybe there really could be some therapeutic potential to selenium supplementation, and an experiment like this might help us to address that question. But anyway, it seems risky to be either too low or too high regarding selenium levels, but it might be something that you want to ponder on next time you eat some fish or munch on some Brazil nuts. So with that, I hope you've learned something in this video. Thank you to my Patreon supporters, and thank you for listening.